I find the same thing. Only about 20% of the clothes do we wear. And, you know, the reason is because we're all just guessing, right? And it's not our fault because no one teaches us this. No one teaches us how to find the perfect clothes for us. And there's just not much out there. You know, you have like fashion magazines and Pinterest, and they're all showing these perfect outfits on these perfect models. And it's like, okay, sure, that looks great on her. How's it going to look on me? And how do I even recreate that? So what I found is what really helps to remedy this is starting with the color palette. Because when you start with a color palette, you automatically limit what you're going to purchase to your ideal colors. And that eliminates basically the mistakes that we make that are color mistakes. Welcome to Spark Joy, the podcast dedicated to celebrating the Kamari method and the transformative power of surrounding yourself with joy and letting go of all the rest. With your hosts and certified Kamari consultants, Kristen Ivey and Karen Sochi. And now, here's the show. Are you thinking about adding more brightness, lightness, and joy to your wardrobe? Is your closet full of clothes that look better on the hanger than you? Maybe it's the color choices that you are making. Today's guest, Jeannie Sif Marwini of Color Guru, is here to tell us about color coordinating and how to make color work for you. Jeannie is obsessed with helping real women look and feel amazing in their clothes. She is the founder and CEO of Color Guru, where she helps women create the wardrobe of their dreams by analyzing their hair, skin, and eye color in order to give them their ideal color palette for clothing. She teaches an online course called Style Secrets for Everyday Women, Jeannie is a wife and mother of two girls in Arden, Delaware. Her work has been featured on the Design Mom blog, This Organized Life podcast, and Philadelphia Style magazine. Welcome to the show, Jeannie. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Jeannie, I'm so glad you could join us today because I think this is a really important topic. How can we spark joy When it comes to the colors that we wear, the colors that are lighting up our life, right? It's so important. But we're going to start with taking a step back and talking to you about how you got started, because this is such a specific type of talent and service. How did you get started becoming a color consultant? So I got started about... 10 years ago, I guess my journey in this started when I got my own colors done at the prompting of my aunt, who basically told me, I think you're wearing all the wrong colors for you. And I was like, I didn't even know there were right colors. Like, that's a thing, (laughs) you know? She hunted down a color consultant and they're few and far between, very hard to come by, but we finally found one. I got a color palette from her and it was a total game changer for my wardrobe. I used it just on my own for about five years. And then I realized that the color palette she gave me, it felt pretty dated. It was kind of left over from the 80s. And a lot of the colors were colors that you couldn't really find in the stores so much. So I started to research and basically came up with a new color palette for myself. And then it kind of came about very organically. I was dressing in my colors and loving it. And I had some friends who asked me to help with their colors. And then their friends wanted to help with their colors. And so I started doing these color consultations just here and there for friends and then friends of friends and family. And... As I did more of them, I got more and more interested. And so I just went into about six months of like solid research where I learned everything I could about coloring and how that affects what colors look best on us. And I just got kind of obsessed with it because for me, it had been such a game changer to help me make smarter choices while I was shopping and have a wardrobe full of things that I really loved. And I thought, you know, other women could really use this knowledge. 
And it's kind of one-time knowledge that you use then for the rest of your life. And so that's how Color Guru started. It just sort of grew very organically. Well, I'm so glad that you discovered this as your talent and grew this into a business. And I really, really enjoyed the consultation that I received. And I can't wait to share that with our listeners a little bit later on in the show. But before we dive into what my color story is, I'd love to know a little bit more about how you work with clients exactly. You mentioned this idea of doing colors. What does that entail? Yeah, well, it started out when I was, you know, first starting the business, I was seeing people in person and I was putting fabrics up against their skin and, you know, showing them in a mirror, this is a color that is great for you, as opposed to this one, which is not as flattering. Can you see the difference? And I would show them the difference. And then I was thinking, of course, how this grew. How could I possibly do this online? How could I offer this in a virtual way? Because I obviously can't put fabrics on to actual people if we're talking about a virtual consultation. And I developed a method of doing a virtual consultation from photos We analyze their hair, skin, and eye color and give them their ideal color palette for clothing from photos they submit to us. And the only tricky thing was I learned really quickly that I needed multiple photos, at least five, because you know how it is when you see a photo of yourself inside in like dim lighting, and then you see a picture of yourself outside and you can look very different, right? So as soon as I discovered that I could do this and get people's photos and put colors around their face in order to show them in a virtual way, see how this color looks as opposed to this color, that's when I knew I really had a way to make this work online. So now we do all of our consultations virtually. We've kind of really tweaked our system over and over again so that we're offering people a really clear product and not just handing them a palette, but also showing them, this is why these colors work for you. So I I really like to teach our clients something about their coloring along the way. So they leave with not only their ideal color palette, but also a deeper understanding of their coloring and what it means in terms of colors. You talk about something that really seems important, and that is this disparity between the hodgepodge of clothing that we have in our closets and those things that we actually wear. And we know that pre con Mari, people often only wear about 20% of what they have in their closet. What are some of the things that lead to people making mistakes in their purchases? That is such a great question. And I find the same thing because I work with women in their closets and with their clothing choices. And I find the same thing. Only about 20% of the clothes do we wear. And, you know, the reason is because we're all just guessing, right? And it's not our fault because no one teaches us this. No one teaches us how to find the perfect clothes for us. And there's just not much out there. You know, you have like, fashion magazines and Pinterest, and they're all showing these perfect outfits on these perfect models. And it's like, okay, sure, that looks great on her. How's it going to look on me? And how do I even recreate that? So what I found is what really helps to remedy this is starting with the color palette. Because when you start with a color palette, you automatically limit what you're going to purchase to your ideal colors. And that eliminates basically the mistakes that we make that are color mistakes. So if you know definitively, these are my best colors, and that includes you know, your neutrals and your brighter colors and maybe a few pastels that you wear well, then you can go to those colors every time and have that part figured out. And that is the first step. I always say start with color for multiple reasons. The main reason I say start with color is that when you can walk into a store, you can scan the store for your colors, right? You can't scan for your shape or like style, right? Because you'd have to lift up every garment. You can scan a store for colors. You can also so easily when you're online shopping, 
search for colors. You know, most retailers now have a color option. And so you can search for colors. Once you've kind of got your colors down, I always say the next step should be shapes and just getting some basic information about your body type and what shapes of clothing work best on your body type, total game changer. So now you've, again, limited kind of what you're allowing into your closet based on shape. And then the third thing is to do a real deep dive into what your personal style is. And that is really just how you want to show up in the world. And that's the piece that, you know, nobody can hand you, right? Somebody can look at your coloring and give you your colors. Somebody can look at your body shape and say, this is what typically works on an hourglass shape or more of a pear shape, you know? But personal style is the one you kind of have to figure out for yourself. And that is the the last piece of the puzzle. And I always tell women, you know, if you, I like to break it down and make it simple. If you understand those three things and what works for you in those three areas, you will no longer buy clothes that are mistakes because you have standards for your clothing. You're not going to bring things into your closet just because it was on sale or just because, you know, you found it and you didn't want to leave the store without buying something, right? They have to fit your criteria. And uh, I think that is really the key is having really strong criteria for what you bring into your closet to begin with. I love that. And it mirrors and really intersects so well with the basic concept of does it spark joy? Does it get you excited to double check to make sure it also fits color wise and illuminate you in that way it makes so much sense. And I can imagine that, of course, like it's very obviously applies to what you wear in terms of your clothing or maybe accessories. But does this concept of knowing your colors also translate to your home, like everything from like furniture to the wall color or maybe even like your nail color or something like that. Like just knowing your colors, is is that a thing too? Yeah, it's so interesting that you asked that because what I have found, this interesting little tidbit that I didn't expect to find, but what I found was a lot of the women that I have worked with, once I give them their ideal color palette, they're like, wow, I don't wear these colors, but they're in my home. Like Mm. I choose these colors for my home. I surround myself with them. And I feel like they've got this intuition about their colors that they love. I feel like women generally love their colors. Like they feel connected to the colors that work for them. But I think what happens is with clothing, we get so many messages about like what's trendy or like what's age appropriate or like we got all these mixed messages about clothing that we just get confused and we sort of stop trusting our intuition. And I feel like a lot of women have told me like, it felt like I was sort of coming home when I got my color palette. Like it's just been such an interesting thing. And some women then after they get their color palette, they choose to take it even more into their home. I had somebody who emailed me a couple of weeks ago who said, I just bought dishcloths and I couldn't possibly buy dishcloths that weren't my colors, you know? (laughs) And it can be really fun to just really embrace those colors as like, these are kind of the colors that I want to use in my closet. These are the colors I want to use in other areas of my life as well. One of the things I've really noticed about myself is that as part of what I believe to be the benefits of the Conroy process is that I've learned a lot more about myself and what really works for me. And when I look at my own closet and compare it to the closet I had a few years ago, most of my wardrobe would have been red and black. And now I look at it and it's shades of pink, gray, and navy. I mean, there's still some black in there, but I never bought navy before. And I know the pink is because pink has become a very popular color, but I really like it and it works on me. But I do know that, as you said, back in the days when we could go into a store, even online, there is still that just desire to buy something new and fun. And so let's say that I go into a store, I'm looking online and I see things and I've determined that they are in my color range, but how can I know what's really going to work for my wardrobe? What other things besides color 
should someone take into account to make sure that the purchases they make are going to work for them? Yeah, great question. So we already talked a little bit about understanding your shape and your personal style as secondary to color. But the other thing that I think could be really helpful is asking yourself before you make that purchase, do I have at least five things in my closet that I could picture myself wearing this with, right? So something can spark joy and that's wonderful as a first question to ask when it comes to your closet. But I think that a closet that really works has to have garments that really work together. And so you could have something that sparks joy and you could have five different things that spark joy. It doesn't necessarily mean they work with each other. You could potentially be left with a bunch of sort of standalone items if you don't also ask, do I have five other things that this goes with? So if you're buying a top, you know, you want to think about like, do I have five skirts or pants or shorts or, you know, whatever bottoms that would go with this top that I can picture myself wearing it this with. And again, coming back to the color, I think the way color helps so much in making that easier to picture is that your color palette is a family of colors that is made to work together. So most women who have not had a color consultation, they have sort of a smattering of all four seasons of colors in their closet. So what I do is called seasonal color analysis. And so, you know, we have winters and springs and summers and autumn types. And so most women have a little bit of all of those colors in their closet. And once you really commit to buying in your seasonal type, you buy in a family of colors. And so your closet automatically starts to coordinate much better as soon as you commit to your color palette. The question, does it spark joy, is a simple one, but not so easy to execute alone. Extend your tidying experience by joining the Spark Joy Club, our online community filled with our clients, fellow listeners, and Kamari enthusiasts ready to support your journey. If you find yourself buried under clothing, stuck on storage, or pointing fingers at untidy housemates or family members, we want to help you finish your tidying journey once and for all. Support the show at the Joy Riser level and receive access to our exclusive virtual community, as well as the Tidy Home Joy Journal, your number one tidying companion. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click on join the club to get started. And now back to the show. I love the whole idea of organizing these in seasons of color. And spoiler alert, my season was twilight winter. Ah, I'm so excited to get this analysis. (laughs) So we're going to jump right in and I'm going to walk through some things that I learned about myself when I worked with Jeannie. Let's see, where to begin? So let's explain twilight winter. So twilight winter is one of three winter types. So each season, winter as an example, has three different types and you're the twilight type of winter. And so that just means that you are the deepest of the winter types in terms of your coloring. And you have very deep hair, you have deep eyes, And you have skin that has a natural warmth year round. So some other types of winters, they might get very, very pale in the winter. And then in the summer, their skin gets very deep with color, but yours is deep with color year round. When we look at somebody's coloring, like we looked at yours, we look at a a bunch of different things and then add it up like an equation, essentially. The first thing we look at is warm versus cool. Do you look better in warm metallics, which would be gold and rose gold and anything that looks bronzy or coppery? Or do you look better in silvers and platinums and white golds? And for you, it was silver. So I'm curious if right off the bat, like, was that a surprise for you? That was definitely a surprise because I think I own maybe three pieces of silver jewelry and Mm -hmm. everything else is either some colorful jewelry or gold. I tend to use gold everywhere in my home and things I wear on my body. Like 
I rarely wear silver. So I was really shocked by that. Yeah. And twilight winters are interesting because they always have a mix of warm and cool. So warm and cool is a spectrum. And there are some people who are extremely on the warm side and some people extremely on the cool side. But twilight winters always have some of both. And so for you, your hair and your eyes are considered cool. Your skin is actually a mix of warm and cool, but it's further on the warm side. So you know, it's not surprising that, you know, you've seen gold jewelry on yourself and it doesn't look so bad, right? It looks pretty good, but silver is still better because overall you're cool. And so then we do a secondary test that is a warm versus cool test with color as well. So we do the metallics first and then we do the color. And then we move on to a light versus deep test. And so that just is a question of, is your palette going to be dominated by light colors or deep colors? And I say dominated because all of our palettes have some light and some deep colors, but they're always heavier in one or the other. And for you, it was very obvious that you needed deep color. Yep. And by that, you mean like colors that are saturated, right? So like the the jewel tones and the, the deep fuchsias, the deep purples or teals, that kind of like deeper colors, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lots of saturation, lots of like what I call color weight. So a pastel would have like a very light color weight, but a saturated color would have a heavy color weight. And you definitely look better in the deeps. And that made a lot of sense to me because I was looking at these colors and all of them were so familiar and because I use them all the time, not only in what I wear, but also even in my brand. Um, Some of these colors aligned exactly with the colors I use on my website, which is actually a fun fact. The colors that I ended up using in my brand were inspired by a shirt that I had in my closet that I really loved. So it's all connected. I love that. You know, I've worked with so many women who own businesses and want to use their colors in their and have changed their colors to use them in their personal brand. And I just, I love that. Yeah. And I also noticed that some of these colors were all the ones that were kind of lighter, not necessarily, well, some of the deeper ones, but usually I wear a lighter color on my nails and almost all of them were the ones that I tend to grab in the nail shop, especially like the, the greenish blues and the grays and the the grays that have like a hint of lavender, all of those colors are the ones that I love to use. And I remember we talked about my lip color as well was like, right, exactly a match too. (laughs) Yes, yes. Because it's a funny story. What happened was we put out the color cards and people were so thrilled. And they said, can I pick my makeup from my color card? And I was like, "Uh, I'm not a makeup artist. I don't really know. (laughs) I really don't know. And so what I did about a year and a half ago was I collaborated with a makeup artist and we made makeup cards as well to go along with the color cards. And they're very simple. The concept behind them was just a couple of go-to colors for each section of your face that you can then match in any brand. And um, we've gotten really great feedback on those. I think it's really nice. Like you were talking about that lip color and you're like, yep, that's totally right up my alley, you know, Mm -hmm. but it's nice to have a little record of some go-to colors to try and make up as well. Yeah. And you sent me these lovely laminated cards and I am going to carry them absolutely everywhere uh, with me whenever I go to the nail shop, (laughs) go to Ulta or go to a store, which sometimes I do go to stores in person. Um, I'm the big online shopper, but I still, like you were saying, selecting those little color dots online when you're trying to choose, you know, what color that you want to buy in a certain dress or whatever. And this is just so Mm -hmm. incredibly useful on so many levels. And I only actually have one lip color that I own. It's one of my few things that I keep pretty minimal. So it was great that that particular color works so well because I literally only have one. It was great validation as well as just learning new things like that silver looks good on me or that grays actually aren't bad on me, which I always thought they were. So I just learned so much. So it's just an amazing service that you've put together here. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad. That really makes me feel so happy. 
And by the way, if you're listening to us thinking, oh my gosh, I would love to see this. Like I'm a visual person like you, Kristen. Why can't I see all these options that you're talking about? We're going to make this available on Spark Joy podcast Instagram. So you're going to see my lovely face and all the colors that Jeannie has suggested work for me. So we'll definitely link that in the show notes. And I cannot wait to have mine done. I am so excited about this whole process. It sounds amazing. I'm already thinking about, wow, this is going to help me do, you know, an in-between edit of my closet because if it doesn't work for me, I'll now have even more evidence for why it doesn't. So it'll make thanking items and letting them go even that much easier. So that's awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's one of the things people often use this as a, like a springboard to then declutter their closet. And it just makes the decluttering really simple because you can see now, once you know your colors, why some of those things that you bought and hoped would work for you never really worked for you. And that's kind of why they sat there. Often it's a color choice issue. You know, and I think that when we go through the process with our clients, we often will note that they end up with a big maybe pile we revisit the maybe pile at the end of a particular category, I would say a good amount of the time, it turns out that it is a color issue. So I think that this is really a great tool for people to just learn more about what really does work for them. Yes, absolutely. Well, Jeannie, I've learned so much from you and I love the tips that you shared today. Do you have a favorite tidying tip? or a favorite tip when it comes to closet color coordination that you could share? Yes, I actually just started this in the past year for myself. I arranged my clothes in order of color instead of in order of type. And I actually love looking at my closet much more. I just find it more joyful to see like, oh, these are all of my pinks and these are all of my teals and like the colors that I love are all kind of grouped together. And I just find that really fun and interesting way to kind of shake up your closet if you're not already doing that. I used to put, you know, my pants together and my skirts together and my dresses together and things like that. But I actually much prefer arranging things in color order. So give it a try. I love that. I think that is really a great thing to experiment with just to see what works for you. There are no you must do's in KonMari. So trying it a different way is always a great way to just learn a lot more about your closet. So tell us what is sparking the most joy for you at this very moment. Today, I had the loveliest experience of going outside my house and seeing that my peonies were blooming and they're my absolute favorite flower. And, you know, peonies only bloom for like a week or two. It's a really short bloom period, but they're huge and they're fluffy and they're pink and they smell so amazing. And it reminds me of my wedding day because on my wedding day, I had like a bouquet that was all peonies and that just made me feel so happy today. Oh, that sounds like a true spark of joy. Sounds beautiful. (laughs) Well, Jeannie, thanks so much for sharing your talents today. And if there's listeners who'd like to get in touch with you, how can they find you? So a couple places, Instagram, I'm on Instagram, you know, all the time and I'm at your color guru. And then my website you, where you can check out the consultation options is yourcolorguru.com. Perfect. And you've put together a very special offer exclusively for SparkJoy listeners. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I am offering uh, SparkJoy listeners 10% off of any consultation package or any gift consultation because we do these consultations as gifts as well. And the coupon code for that is SPARKJOY, all one word, and it's non-case specific. So it doesn't matter if it's capitals or lowercase, just SPARKJOY, all one word, and you'll get that 10% off. Wow, Jeannie, thank you so much. This was really fun. We were so delighted to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. I really enjoyed talking to you. (laughs) So now we want to hear from you. Tell us your burning, tidying questions or share stories about how Kanmari has impacted your life. 
head over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe and review the show, which helps us reach others along their tidying journeys. To extend your tidying experience, you can join the Spark Joy Club. Visit sparkjoypodcast.com and click join the club to become a member of the Spark Joy community. Or join us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope your day sparks joy. Thank you for listening to Spark Joy with your hosts, Kristen Ivey of For the Love of Tidy in Chicago and Karen Sochi of The Serene Home in New York City. Spark Joy, the podcast, is not endorsed by or affiliated with Kamari Media Inc. The opinions expressed on this episode represent the views of the co hosts and guests alone and do not represent the corporate position of Kamari Media Inc. or the Kamari Consultant Community.